Okay, here I am with a modified uh, delitting of a, uh, a 4570. Uh, yeah, it's not one of the K's, but this is just to show a guide. Um, I put electrical tape along uh, the edges of the vise so that uh, the edges can get mangled up. I'm going to put, um, not on, not against that ledge, but on this main ledge that makes it all the way around. I'm going to drop it right in there. So, uh, I'm going to hopefully see. Uh, that's going in, and let's put some electrical tape on this board I'm going to use so that I'm not going to mangle the PCB too bad. And I've got my rubber mallet here. I'm going to hit the board. Unfortunately, I only got two hands. I can't hold the camera, and I got no place to place it. So I'm going to get okay, back to So I, uh, I just felt it just barely break off the glue. I can pull it off now. I will know I had to do it a few times. Um, I had to uh, make sure it was secure enough. Um, otherwise, uh, this was popped out uh, twice. Well, it didn't pop out, but kind of came out of the device. So that's no good. So make sure you got enough pressure. I also had a little bag there to catch it. If it flew out, but uh, fortunately I could feel it. And I was just giving kind of light taps. or Well, fairly strong, but... Not enough to see it fly across like I've seen some people do. Okay, so let's just see if the tape helped at all. And, uh, yep, looking good. I didn't mangle the heat spreader, so this can be reused. So what I'm going to do now is clean this up. I might even lap it to make it a nice even surface there, as well as the top. And then um, um, clean that up as well. Let's see if the fingernail works, otherwise credit mark card might work. Uh, okay, a little update on what I've been doing. Um, the I think the major problem is not with the kind of paste that they're using, but how much uh, gap there is between uh, the, the core and the heat spreader. Um, so, um, I thought, uh, I was hoping that just um, taking the uh, glue off of there would help bring it a little bit closer, but um, I've already scraped a little bit more off with my nail, but before I really touched it much, um, I just put it on here with a little test, a little dot of paste, and uh, I squeezed it and pressed it down, and um, I did not get a satisfactory result. Um, so it looks now this was actually pretty easy to clean up. You could just use a razor blade and uh, clean that up pretty quick, um, but this unfortunately um, you got to be a lot more careful with. So I will get back to you uh, once this uh, gets a bit cleaner. And hopefully I can make a bit better contact. Um, Alright, this is after about 10 to 15 minutes of grueling fingernail work. Um, let's see, I've got most of it off. And uh, I finished it off with uh, this uh, isopropyl, 99% uh, isopropyl on a Kleenex. And I'm not sure if it, uh, the solvent helps with the glue at all. But in any case, it seems to be spreading a little bit better now that uh, I've taken that uh, glue off. So, um, next up is actually uh, mounting this back together and making All sure right. it works. Alright, um, so the temps actually went up for my first attempt. So, I'm going to see if um, I actually made proper contact with the heat spreader. Got to try not to move it too much. Um, there's just a little bit of an uncovered part here, but uh, looks pretty even, could be a little bit thinner, but uh, I think also one, one of the major problems was um, just the kind of paste I used, it was what came with this uh, A50 Corsair cooler, and it's a very thick paste, uh, so I should probably be using a, a thinner one both underneath to ensure it spreads really evenly, and as well on here, uh, when I took this off it was pretty thick, thicker than when I first had, uh, applied it, so I'm gonna uh, redo this, also gonna check make sure the heat spreader's level, make sure I didn't bend it out of shape in the vise, and uh, I might lap it a little, and we'll try okay, it again. update, uh, I'm going to continue lapping this. You can see there's a noticeable dip in the uh, the center. Um, I thought, nah, it's not that bad, I can just go as is, but um, I held it up against a card and it, it did seem noticeable. So this is with, uh, I just went straight to 1200 grit. Um, because I just wanted to see if I saw the shiny spots that would, uh, show me clearly that, uh, it's uneven and it's accomplished that. Um, also, um, I'm not sure if I can really pick it up well, 
but uh, there's three little bumps or little dots of copper where uh, it must have been distorted by the vise even with the electrical tape protecting it um, so it looks like if you're going to be doing these delitting you're probably also going to want to um, lap it I also lap the, 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 the bottom here um, along the edges um, just to get rid of any existing glue to make a nice flat surface and I just quickly buffed it up with the 120 uh, or the 1200 grit just to also clean up the contact area there a bit but I'm gonna get back to you with a bit better uh, bit more even uh, surface. Right, so this is spending a few minutes with the 600 and then going back to the 1200 as you can see there's still quite a bit of a, a dip in the center and I checked it against the card and it does have a bit more or still has some light leakage in the center but uh, it's improved a little and uh, the point of this video is not to uh, um, show the benefits of lapping there's other videos already out there for that but um, just to show the benefit of uh, delitting um, so as long as I can get any distortions that were done uh, due to the vice uh, that's just all I really need to do so I think I'm gonna go with this and see what kind of results I get um, I'm gonna use the line method on the die itself press this down um, and then I'm gonna use the spread method on this and this I'm gonna do it very thin on, on both of them um, I don't really like these direct touch uh, heat sinks because you can't just do the dot method and drop it down the, the heat bite's gonna trap the paste anyway I will uh, get back to you with the results actually uh, I lied I'm gonna use the spread method on the course since I'm gonna be using the MX2 which is really easy stuff to spread um, but um, if you were to use the cool lab liquid ultra which I'm gonna be using once I get the K series and do this again on that one is um, there's all these contacts um, and what I'm gonna use to cover those uh, down the road is um, um, a thermal tape um, so that should help uh, insulate them from using uh, the cool labs but since I'm gonna be using MX2 for this um, that will not be necessary okay now I'll get back okay, to it okay so I know I didn't take a video of the before but uh, here's the after um, ignore the voltage you can even read it yeah that is not the correct voltage but that's the correct frequency um, yes it's a very mild clock just using the base clock because well it's a non-k um, CPU thanks Intel for messing over the Haswell anyway um, yeah I'll zoom in there so before it was um, the max on core 0 was 73 core 2 was 73 uh, core 3 was 74 and core 4 was 71 so we're looking around a 10 degree drop average um, and I did make note of the ambient temps it is a degree cooler today um, so subtract one from that so you're looking about a 9 degree drop and keep in mind this is using uh, MX so I'm just uh, stress testing it with uh, Intel burn test and I waited till the temp stabilized so it's been like that for a few minutes now I just um, want to finish off a few notes this uh, fan's been running at the same speed the whole time it's uh, uncontrolled uh, three pin so uh, that was definitely wasn't a factor um, also uh, I'm only using this A50 I do have a Noctua NHD 14 that I could have used but it's been used on another machine so I could have gotten even lower temps and of course I could have even gotten even, even lower temps by using the uh, um, this liquid metal there's a few other I uh, can't remember what the name of the other competitor to uh, Cool Labs is but anyway there's a few uh, liquid metal options um, that you could put both underneath the um, the heat spreader as well as on top and I've seen some people getting even lower temps doing that and finally one option is um, you can skip uh, the heat spreader um, with uh, certain water uh, cooling kits I would not uh, as of Ju late July or mid July now um, I still have yet to see a shim kit uh, for these house well CPUs so um, you really have to be careful if you want to do it uh, um, without uh, a proper water cooling kit and um, special retention mechanism because uh, the current retention mechanism um, used the heat spreader to hold the, the package down um, so with the, the heat spreader there it just could flop around in there so um, I really am not recommending it um, stick with the heat spreader and just make sure it's making proper contact and uh, if you're using the vice method you will probably want to uh, lap it to make sure that uh, any distortions you've caused in the uh, heat spreader when you use the vice have been uh, uh, smoothed out anyway I hope uh, this video has helped you guys um, dropping 9 degrees without really changing anything else 
um, way better than a, just a simple um, thermal uh, interface change. So yeah, I found this project worthwhile. And I hope you guys uh, found this video worthwhile too. Thanks.